All right, man, peace. So as many of you brothers who follow the NBA know, Gilbert Arenas, the retired former star player of the Washington Wizards from the 2000s, made a series of quote-unquote controversial statements pertaining to 1990s defense and his assertion that the defense played during that time period was overrated and that really all they did was foul when they could not contain the offensive player. And to a degree, I do agree with him that there are certain aspects of the various eras in the history of the NBA that are a bit overrated. For example, the 1980s was not a defensive era. I've said that repeatedly. It was not a defensive era at all, especially in the early 80s. Just like today, they talk about how the players are so much more athletic today than in yesteryear. That is not true either. As a matter of fact, the players today are not as athletic as the players that I witnessed growing up in the early to mid 1990s. There's not one player in the league today who's as great an athlete as Dominique Wilkins, Clyde Drexler, or Michael Jordan. Not one. Russell Westbrook, LeBron James are in the ballpark. Now Zion Williamson is coming into the league. He's going to be someone who I would put in the class of a Michael Jordan, Dominique, when it comes to raw athleticism. But this notion that the players today are so much more athletic than back in the 90s or even the 80s, no, that's not true at all. Or the 70s with players like Dr. J, so on and so forth, David Thompson, etc. In every era, you're going to have great athletes. In every era, you're going to have players who try hard on defense, who play hard on offense, and they're going to have to play according to the dictates of the laws during their generation. Point being is this. The 1990s was a great defensive era. The 80s wasn't. But the 1990s was, especially starting at around 1993 and really culminating in the early 2000s. That is when the greatest defense, statistically speaking, existed in the history of the league. There's no doubt about it. It can be quantified. It can be qualified. And as I've already stated or as I've alluded to earlier, in this time period, they claim that the players are so much faster. The pace is so much faster today. That is not true. The pace of the NBA game was actually faster in the early 80s than it is right now. So once again, this notion that the players are faster and stronger and better today and more athletic, that is not true. But I will say this about Gilbert Arenas. There's an issue that players from yesteryear have in being able to let their past go. Let the past speak for itself. You don't always have to compare yourself to this generation because it makes you look old and bitter. It's like a grandfather constantly telling his grandson that you're not as good as me. It makes you look real silly. So anyway, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. At your boy, Gilbert Arenas, who also, I have to say, caused me great joy getting to cover him earlier in my career. Never shy about sharing his opinions. He recently said on the No Chill podcast, the defense in the 90s wasn't that great, actually. Players. No, the defense in the 90s was that great. And I'll say this, some of the greatest players in the history of the NBA defensively played in the 1990s at their respective positions. Gary Payton is the greatest defensive point guard of all time. And I'm not quite sure if there's a close second. Michael Jordan played in the 1990s. He's the greatest defensive shooting guard of all time. With honorable mention to players like Alvin Robertson, Joe Dumars, even on a lower level, Kobe Bryant, who when he played hard on defense was a very good defensive player. But some of the greatest defensive players in the history of the league played during that time period. Scottie Pippen, who was arguably the greatest defensive small forward of all time. Dennis Rodman, who may be the greatest defensive player ever, pound for pound, inch for inch. I will still give that vote to Bill Russell, but Dennis Rodman certainly deserves an honorable mention. He was an exemplary defensive player who could guard multiple positions, but I'll be covering him more in the video that I do on him. Guys, they couldn't defend, so is that the yes or real talk? Oh, all right. Let, let's hear it. I think it's BS because there's more emphasis on playing defense back then. The way the game is constructed now and, and how they want nothing but scoring and highlights and dunks, there's an emphasis on not touching people at all. So it's Absolutely. You cannot even touch the offensive player today. Back in the 1990s, you could put hands on an offensive player and try to guide him. If you get the opportunity, go back and watch some of the replays of those old Bulls versus Knicks playoff matchups in 1992 and 93 and how John Starks and Gerald Wilkins would guard Michael Jordan. That type of defense would not be allowed today. It's truly amazing that Jordan put up the numbers that he put up in that era offensively, which no one ever takes into account when they blindly compare Jordan's numbers to players like LeBron James. And I'll give LeBron credit as well. At the start of his career, he played in the statistically greatest defensive era in the history of the NBA. So I have to give LeBron James a certain amount of credit 
because when he first came into the league in 03, that was in the midst of the most defensive era in the history of the league, even more defensive than the early 90s, no doubt about it. But the way that they guarded Michael Jordan in those early 90s matches between the Bulls and the Knicks would not be allowed today. A free pass. Can you imagine what MJ would do in this era where you right. couldn't touch him? Absolutely. A prime Michael Jordan, 28-29, he would certainly average 40 points a game in the playoffs. I've heard people say that Jordan would average 50 points a game in the regular season. No, I don't believe that. I just think that that would be too taxing on the human body to even try that at his position of shooting guard. But I could certainly see him averaging 40 points a game in the playoffs because the onus will be placed on him to score the basketball. And I could definitely see him having a Kawhi Leonard or LeBron James circa 2018-esque playoff run where he averaged somewhere around 37 to 40 points a game, especially with the freedom of movement, even though they allow a bit more physicality in the playoffs. And, you know, you saw what he did when people were trying to take his head off. So to me, there's definitely more emphasis and people don't, you know, these younger kids don't care about playing defense at all anymore. You know, they just want to score, shoot threes and dunk. But uh, I, I definitely say that's BS because they played defense back in the 90s, no question. Mm-hmm. They also walk uphill. I can't stress this enough, though. When older generational dudes are always trying to compare themselves and detract from the younger generation, all that does is it breeds a mutual level of antipathy. So as you get older, you have to have the level of wisdom where you can make a case for your generation without creating some some type of acrimony between yourself and the person that you're speaking to who's younger. Because younger people don't want to hear all that. You have to remember, you can't just tell old wives tales anymore. People have YouTube. They can go on and they can watch the games. And the first thing that they're going to do is watch the game with a critical eye, as opposed to appreciating what the game was like back then. Walk uphill both ways to school. Yeah. They, yeah. Downhill. Yeah. yeah. Easy. The league wants points. Yeah. The league wants points. Right. And knowing that, I thought Jabari Parker probably said it best last summer. <laughs> they don't play. Me, they don't yeah. pay me to play defense. Well, the Bulls that... don't pay him to do anything anymore. <laughs> so. Yes, that was one of the more stupid comments that I've heard from a professional athlete in recent memory to say that a team is not paying him to play defense. All you're telling the rest of the teams in the NBA is that you're a very selfish player. You're not someone who's going to assist your team on defense. You're only concerned about your numbers. And Jabari Jabari Parker, no disrespect, he's been a big flop in the league thus far. That's probably a good idea. But the point is, they don't. There, there is a whole there is a whole shift change. And this ties into what Steph has done for the game, in my opinion. When you look at what's gone on, People want to score. They're not getting paid, or rarely are they getting paid to stop people. And that's the shift. And that's why I, I couldn't disagree with, with Gilbert anymore <laughs> on that one. Well, if you think about it, I mean, when you're watching highlights, you don't want to see, I don't. I love defense. I don't want to see defensive highlights. I want to see someone get dunked on. Well, I could watch defensive highlights, but it depends on the player. Some players play defense more exciting than other players, especially if they're multifaceted. Like, I could watch a highlight of Michael Jordan's greatest defensive plays or Dennis Rodman or Scottie Pippen because they have a certain amount of flair even when they play defense. Other players, I'm not quite sure if I want to watch a David Robinson highlight of shot blocks or Dikembe Mutombo. But when it comes to Jordan and certain other players, I could watch it. It depends on who it is. Because we romanticize it so much, though. So it's like back in the day, I mean, I, who had to attend all seven games of the Pistons-San Antonio Spurs (laughs) NBA Finals, where uh, I think they broke 90 like a couple times during that series, I can tell you it was not scintillating basketball, but people (laughs) sure miss it. They claim they miss it. I agree with you there, Rachel Nichols. A lot of these guys on the internet who talk about how they missed the old... New York Knicks versus Miami Heat series, they're all full of shit. Those games used to finish 72 to 74, all that nonsense, <laughs> when the league's ratings were going through the crapper. People don't really want to watch that. They just act like they do. They just talk shit all damn day. But I remember that 2005 NBA Finals between the Detroit Pistons and the San Antonio Spurs, which the Pistons should have won, by the way. They should have won that series, but unfortunately for them, Rashid Weedhead Wallace missed his defensive assignment and left big shot Bob Robert Ory wide open for the game winning three. I believe it was in game five. May have been game four, but I think it was game five. Either way, that defensive error, that was very hurtful to the league. And that's why they were very happy when the Phoenix Suns started to bring offense back into the NBA. But anyway, to make a long story short, I understand to a degree where Gilbert Arenas is coming from. He's coming from a standpoint of resentment and being upset because 
he feels like the older players are not willing to give a lot of the younger players the credit that they deserve because there are things that players today do better than they did back in the 80s and 90s, like long-range shooting. And, of course, guys will say, well, what are you talking about? Back then, the defense they played would not have allowed long-range shooting bullshit. For the most part, the defensive players, especially if you were guarding the point guard or the shooting guard, you guarded underneath the three-point line. You didn't guard over the three-point line back then. So it was just a stylistic thing. So just give the young boys the credit that they deserve. Of course, back in the previous era, players could post up with a, with a far higher level of skill. That's That, to me, is, is not a debate at all. But for Gilbert Arenas to say that in the 1990s they did not play great defense or the defense was overrated or they looked at fouling as a form of great defense, no. Fouling was a part of defense. But the physicality and, you know, tracking your man down and going over screens, things of that nature, that era was something else, man. But anyway, peace.